So let's just zoom in on that uh, and see what we've got. A little bit closer in here. All the details present. So this is what a compression waveform looks like. Well, what does it really represent? Um, and we'll show. Uh, let me show you a couple pictures um, with the va valve events uh, marked off. Uh, one when it's missing and one when it's not. And of course, it is missing here. There's no spark plug in the hole, right? <laughs> but I mean, here this is when this is a low compression. Uh, when the compression was lowest here uh, in one of these captures, and we've marked off the valve events. Uh, using just simple math, knowing that there's 720 degrees between each compression event, which would be here and here, and then simply uh, using a little division uh, into the number of milliseconds uh, between these two points to determine, you know, the milliseconds per degree, and then we can just mark these off. And this was uh, actually these these. Rulers here weren't placed here based on events on the waveform. They were placed based on valve opening uh, degree events uh, according to the cam card uh, in the all data. A detailed cam card on this vehicle in the all data shows when the different uh, events take place for each valve, and we thought it was very useful and educational to just mark these off. And in this particular instance here, we are dealing with a low compression you know, we do have a, a valve that is not sealing properly uh, in this capture. And, you know, it's, it's really not that obvious. I mean, it, even if you try to pick the fly stuff out of the pepper here, it's difficult to see a difference between this capture and one where uh, the compression is, is, not, is not bad. So let's just take a look at the other image uh, and, take, and see if we can actually spot any, any obvious differences. You know, so the obvious difference, of course, is the compression's lower. But as far as the actual shape of the waveform, um, it's it's pretty difficult uh, to make a solid call on, on what's going on here. And if you were to be looking at a compression waveform on this vehicle without putting that much time on the screen, uh, what are your odds that it's actually going to register that you've got a changing compression scenario here on a cylinder? that should be stable. But here's where it gets obvious when you can see the trend. You might notice we're a lot higher here at the very beginning. Of course, that's, that's normal. Uh, let's just take a close look at that area. And you can see we have much higher compression uh, during the cranking event and starting. And um, of course, this is because uh, of the differences in intake manifold and compression. The intake manifold uh, pressures re are directly related to the cylinder pressures. And, and just to illustrate that, um, let me bring up a capture uh, that shows that very clearly. Here is an example of uh, several throttle snaps taking place, which of course are going to change cylinder pressures and intake pressures. And we have the blue channel as a compression, running compression uh, transducer uh, test. And then in this, this channel here is actually a vacuum on the intake manifold, a vacuum pressure transducer hooked up simultaneously through a new dual channel uh, transducer interface device, which we should soon be offering on the AutoNerds website. So keep an eye out for that. It's a pretty cool device. Um, but as you can see, uh, they track each other very precisely. Intake pressures and compression pressures are directly related. Uh, when intake pressures uh, increase, uh, so do uh, compression pressures. So on a cranking condition, when your intake manifold vacuum is low and pressures are high, likewise your compression pressures will be considerably higher. When you stab the throttle open, you get these bursts of compression in the cylinder because the intake manifold pressure has also risen. And you can see the direct relationship. And if we even zoom in on that, you can see very clearly that this, uh, the pressures just follow each other very precisely. So that's why that's happening. I just thought I'd mention that so you can see the relationship here between intake pressures and compression pressures.